Jehovah The King of Kings Worship the Lamb That was slain He is our rock And He's our Mighty fortress
about David, the beloved, the man after God's own heart. Again, I have been reading, musing, meditating, contemplating the life, the legacy, and the love of this man after God's own heart. But at the same time, searching my own heart and praying, and I trust you have too, Lord, let me be the man after thine own heart in this 21st century. And as the song says, give me a heart like thine. And it's all right to want to be the person after God's own heart. You can be that person. You can be that person. Man or woman, you can be that person after God's own heart. Without a sense of arrogance, without a sense of pride, without a sense of just trying to be something that, 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 that you cannot be or you aren't. But you can be, you can be the person after God's own heart. As I search the Sega about David, I said, surely there is no reason why I cannot have a heart like mine. I love God with all my heart. I live a sanctified holy life. I don't lie. I don't steal. I don't cheat. I don't manipulate folk. I don't try to. I, I, I live right. I live righteously before God. I walk with God in holiness. I'm sanctified from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet to the tip of my toes. I presented my whole body to him, spirit, soul, and body, as a living sacrifice. In fact, I do it every day. And my mind is renewed by the word of God, by the blood of Jesus, and by the Holy Ghost. And why can't I be a man after God's own heart? And that's true with you. Why can't you be a man? after God's own heart. God was looking for a man when he found David. He was looking for somebody. Amen. Why can't he look in Aliquippa and find persons after God's own heart? Last week, we left off with David giving testimony to King Saul of what the Lord had done for him. Magnifying the Lord's goodness and his kindness. Magnifying his protection and his defense. David magnified God. And if there's any one thing that I do, and you can do, is to magnify Jesus. I talk about Jesus all the time. I talk about what the Lord has done for me. I give my testimony all, all, I mean, almost all the time. Get with me in a length of time. And I'm talking about the Lord's doing. What the Lord has done. How God has brought me. How the Lord saved me. How the Lord keeps me. How the Lord makes a way for me. How the Lord opens a door. How the Lord heals my body. I, I, I'm testifying to what the Lord has done. And I tell, I, I tell you, I told you last Monday, that every one of you ought to have a testimony. And you do have a testimony. And you ought to testify. Not only have it. See, your test can only be a testimony when you tell it. Yes, sir. If you don't tell it, it's just a test you're going through. Let Zion say a testimony. So, a testimony. So a testimony to magnify God. Do you have something that you ought to testify about, tell about, magnify God? I mean, to the people. I don't mean magnify God to himself. 
I don't mean you tell the Lord about him. He didn't say tell me about him. He said for you to be a witness. You tell others what the Lord has done for you. I want to ask you a question. Do you have anything that you ought to tell of what the Lord has done for you? It may not be the same thing that David, the shepherd boy, that little David that played on your harp said. But I'm talking about the testimony that David gave to his king, King Saul. That's made mention of in the 34th all the way through the 37th chapter, verses of the 17th chapter of Kings. When David went before Saul and gave his testimony. It's so long, I, I won't try to read it. I just got it underlined here in my Bible. I got a circle around it. But you read it. it uh, around, the, around the 34th verse, 35th, all the way through the 37th verse. If you can see my Bible and see how it's marked up all like that. Oh my God, oh my. This, this one right here, but you ought to see my other study Bible. But it all wrapped up. Line, words, underlined, and circles all around certain verses that meant so much to me and revelations that God would give me there from. I just got so much wrapped around and got little words I can't read written down in the side of the verse. But I just read over and over and over again this testimony, David's testimony. Do you ever think about your testimony? I mean, no fool, do you ever think about your own testimony? That's not David's, that's not John the Baptist, not either. It's your personal, not my testimony, not Mother Martin's testimony, but your testimony. Do you ever meditate and think about your testimony? I told Bernard the other day, I said, Bernard, you know, I said, I, I'm, I'm by myself so much. I'm by myself so much, man. I said, all I do, Bernard, I said, I, 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 I think about, I, I think about, go back years ago. From the time the Lord saved us, I go back before the Lord saved me, but, but I'm talking about when the Lord saved, gave me really a testimony, when the Lord saved me and how he saved me and the dramatic experiences that took place and how God spoke to me in days past and things when I was just a youngster. I, I, I just tell him, I said, Bernard, I said, these things, I said, I'm by myself. I'm just, just, just there in the room by myself. I just want, I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to talk to myself. Like yesterday when I got back from where I had things I had to do, I said, I don't want to be bothered, Bernard. I don't want to be bothered. People don't even call me. I don't, don't, don't want to be bothered. I didn't tell them what I wanted to do. But I wanted to get, like I used to do on Saturday, Friday, and Saturday, I wanted to get along with God and just to meditate and muse over his word to see what he wanted me to say. But I could hardly pass this verse when Saul was there, the king listening to David. Oh my God. When David talked to him and asked him to let him go and fight the giant. And that's what I'm talking about this morning. Slaying the giant. Slaying the giant. Slaying the giant. Everybody says, slaying the giant. Slay the giant. Slay the giant. Oh, my God. And he was the king, his testimony. And the king listened, but reluctantly, he gave David the chance to go and fight with the giant, Goliath. He didn't want him to go. He felt like he was too young, just a boy, inexperienced. But he didn't realize that he, Saul himself, had backs and lost the anointing of God, lost the spirit of God in his life, and an evil spirit had come from the Lord on him and in his life. And at intervals, he just go into a state of humility, uh, senility, and lose his mind and all else. And only David could come in and play music. But, but as King Saul didn't want to 
give David permission to fight the giant. David just gave his testimony. He said, but king, let me tell you something. He said that one day when a lion was after my sheep, I was out keeping my father's sheep, and a lion was after my sheep and grabbed one, had it in his mouth. But I saw him and ran to him with my bare hands, and I pulled that, 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 that sheep out of the lion's mouth, and the sheep couldn't, and, and killed the lion. And then the next thing, said, another time, the bear got a hold of my sheep, one of my sheep. And I ran to him, and, and I, with my own bare hands, I, I snatched that sheep out of the paw of the bear. I did it because the Lord was with me. I dare you say, the Lord was with me. And this boy, I told you he's just a boy. He, he's a little older than 14, 16 now. But, 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 but just a boy, just a teenager. This boy talked with such passion, gave his testimony with such passion, with such power, with such authority, with such an anointing, with such life that it shook soil. And Saul, the king, said, well, all right. The Lord be with you. But he said, but well, wait a minute. You take my helmet. You take my, 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 my wall outfit. You take my sword. You take all these things that, and put that helmet on his head, David's head, and the helmet came down almost to his shoulder. Yes. He put the cloak around him, and it came all the way across his back in every which way. Had the shoes, and the shoes were too sloppy and too big. And had the sword, and David didn't know about using the sword. He said, listen, your honor, he said, I can't use, thank you, but I can't use your armor. I can't do this. You take your armor back and let me just use my own, what God has given me. And by, by the way, saints, let me tell you something. You can't use that which somebody else has. Don't you try to use somebody else's testimony. You use your own testimony. Don't you talk about what the Lord has done for Melvin Clark. You talk about what the Lord has done for you. I know what the Lord has done for me and you don't know like I know what the Lord has done. Don't care how many times I tell it. Don't care when I tell it, how I tell it. You don't know like I know what he's done for By the same token, I don't know like you know what the Lord has done for Look at somebody say, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. So, so, so David said, you, King Saul, I can't use your garment. Your sword is too heavy. Your helmet is too large. Hey, good call to me. Your shoes are too big. I can't use that. But just let me use what the Lord has given me. The Lord is on my side, and I'm on the Lord's side. See, do y'all ever think about whose side you're on? Do you ever think about the Lord is on your side? Do you ever thank him for being on your side? Do you ever thank him for what he's done for you? Do you ever thank him for being with you? I mean, sometimes when you can't even sense his prayer, but you know that the Lord is in my heart. Wrap your heart I know the Lord is with me. I can't see him. I can't feel him. I don't even hear him. Sometimes I can't see any wax. But I know. Good God Almighty. I know that I know that the Lord is with me now. I asked a man the other day some time ago. I said, are you saying? He said, yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> when he said the I pay, I I <laughs> What's that boy? Next question. I, I, I got so tickled. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, you, I'm talking to him. I said, I was sincere. I said, are you saying you plan to go to hell? He said, yeah. I laughed. I fell out. I couldn't make it. He said, I, 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 I'm 
see. I knew he, I knew about a cuss like that got me. <laughs> but what it meant? That he had a testimony for himself. That you don't have to affirm my testimony. You, you, don't, you, you don't have to say amen to my testimony. You don't have to confirm my testimony. But I know that I know. What he's done to Omar. We sing the song sometimes. You don't know like I know. What he's done for me. I know. Yes, I know. What he's done for me. Look at him and say, I know what the Lord has done for me. David remembered what God had done for him and the victories God had brought about in his life because the Lord was with him. Saints, if the Lord is not with you, don't do anything. You better not go out this door without the Lord being with you. You better not go down the street unless you know that the Lord is with you. You better not walk the streets of Alan Cripper or Pittsburgh. Or Monroeville, or anywhere, unless you know the Lord. People are shooting and folk everywhere. You better know if you do, if they do get shot, that the Lord is with me. Touch your own heart and say, the Lord is with me. Oh, good call almighty. Saul had lost the strength of God. And he thought the strength was in the armor that he had. But David knew that the Lord was with him and the strength wasn't in the arm, but the strength was in the Lord. The Lord, good call almighty. Hey, good call is all that I need. Hey, good call almighty. Mm, he took the garments off and said, I know. I can't walk, go around with swords on me, but let me do what God has given me. You see, saying I'm telling again, you need to be who you are. Be who you are. Don't, 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 no. I want to be not, I want to be so, I want to be who I am in God. Right. For the Lord is my liar, yeah, 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 yeah. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Say, you got to know for yourself that Christ strengthens you. If you don't know the Lord strengthens you, then, then there's something wrong with you. You got to know the Lord gives me strength. And I say I'm strong. When I'm weak, I'm strong. Ah, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. He told you to touch about the thing that you have not as though you already have. Just keep on saying, the Lord is my. Don't talk about the new being weak. Say, the Lord is my strength. Yeah. Ask you how you feel. The Lord is my strength. Hey, good God. I'm strong in the Lord. I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. He's my everything. He's my bulwark. He's my, 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 my shepherd. Hey, good God. He's my shepherd. He's my refuge and my strength. He's my everything. Be who you are. Be glad you are who you are. All I want to do is get my sling and get my stone. Now, David went out and got five stones. Didn't need five stones. Somebody said he got five stones because he had, uh, Goliath had four more brothers. Maybe so, and that's true too. But I think the, Joe, well, well, he was just not trying to put any confidence in himself. I mean, just put too much, I'm saying, put too much confidence in his own self. By the way, don't put your confidence just in yourself. Put your trust in God, what you can do with God to help you. Can I talk while I'm at it? Hey, cut the corner. He took his sling and took the, the rock and went all out there to confront Goliath. And there, Goliath saw him and Goliath looked at that boy and started cussing. See, you mean to tell yeah, the book say cuss. You mean to tell me that's all y'all can do, Saul and Israel. Yeah. Send out a young a boy like this to say this is a shame. And he was insulted. He laid David out and said, I'm gonna take this boy and I'm gonna snatch him loose from his body and give his 
invited to the, 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 the buzzards. Birds to eat up. I said, man, y'all ought to be shame yourself. He looked at David. But David didn't look at himself. David looked at God. He saw Goliath. But he didn't really look at Goliath. He saw, good God, I'm going right there now. He said, I will look to the hills for which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord that made the heavens and made the earth. I want you to know the Lord is my light and my salvation, Mother Bolton. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell, and the wall should rise against me. In this will I be confident. In this will I be confident. Say it again. Say, in this will I be confident. Hey, good God Almighty. For the battle is not mine. The battle is the Lord's. Hey. He called Isaiah. He looked at through John. But he looked all the way through John. And saw Jesus, the Son of God, standing by. I could call her right there with him. Hey, good. And while, 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 look at this. While Goliath was cussing him out, bip, all of a sudden a stone hit him right in the head, in the forehead, and knocked him out. And he fell down on the ground with all his armor on. Some nine foot big Goliath fell on the ground with that stone. Hung up in his head. Hey, good God. And then Joe David ran to him and took his own sword and cut Goliath's head off. Hey, good God. Left his body uh, for the swamp. That's the, 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 the bird to eat up and took the sword. Hey, hey, good God. The head on the sword and carried it back to the king. Whew. Wait a minute. Let me get back here because I got to stop this thing. I want to get it. See, I want to let you know, David realized that the battle is not mine, but the battle is the Lord. He said, Saul, uh, go live. You come to me with your sword and with your armor bearer. Hey, good God, bearing your garment. But I come in the name of the Lord. Saying, Brother Paul, I, I, I underlined that in my thinking and in my Bible. I come in the name of the Lord. Everybody say, in the name of of the, I, I told you years ago that you got power in the name. I mean, when you got nothing else, you, you got the name. Oh, good God. Everybody got the name. Lift your hands. I got the name. I, I got the name. Hey, good God Almighty. I got Jehovah, my rapper. That means he's my healer. I got Jehovah Jesus. He's my niece. He's my banner in the time of war. Say, yeah, good God Almighty. Hey, I got Jehovah Jesus. Shalom. He's my peace. Hey, good God Almighty. Lift your hands. Say, hallelujah. I got the name. Say, so you got all this, but all I got is the name. If you got the name, you got enough. If you got the name, he's a healer. If you got the name, he's a deliverer. If you got the name, he's a battle act. If you got the name, he's a warrior in the time of trouble. If you got the name. That name. Don't, don't, don't lose it. They talk about the name. I, I hate to hear people preach all the time and don't use the name. I, I don't like people. Folk always testify and don't use the name. In my soul, I use the name Jesus. I teach I use the name Jesus. We use a single song. Take the name of Jesus with you everywhere you go. In fact, don't go anywhere that you can't take the name. In trouble, take the name. In persecution, take the name. When you're hurting, take the name. When you're sick, take the name. When you're crying, take the name. When you're broke, take the name. I'm getting happy right now. 
course, I'm getting ready to sit down. But bah, 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 oh, look at him. I said, take the name Jesus with you. Tell him again, take the name Jesus with you. Child of sorrow and of woe. It will strengthen, comfort, give you. Take the name. Wherever you go, oh, good God. That's why the may I present Jesus to you. We talked about Jesus. Hey, hey, good God Almighty. All that I need is in Jesus. He satisfies and joy he supplies. Life would be worthless without him. All things in Jesus. I find. Look at somebody and say, take the name of Jesus with you. Say it again, take the name. Turn on the other side and say, take the name of Jesus. I mean, take that name. Hey, take the name with you. When you're by yourself, take the name with you. When you yeah, 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 take the name with you. When you don't see a way, take the name with you. Abalakaya, Nesia. Lift your hands at the name Jesus. Let me go a little further. Hey, good call almighty. I want to know, do you have a giant that you're facing? Are you, are you facing a giant today, a giant of your own? I don't mean Goliath. Their life is dead, but they got another name. I got a giant named mistreatment. I got a giant that I had a face called fear. I have a giant that I had a face called discouragement. I have a giant that I had a face called guilt. I have a giant that I had a face called sickness. I have, oh, 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 oh. Anybody got a giant named sickness? Hey, good God. I got a giant named, named pain. I got a giant, giant named, named weariness. I got a giant named guilt. I got a giant. Oh, good God Almighty. But when I face these giants, I face somebody. I said, the battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. Here come David. Got to fight Goliath. And David said, the battle ain't mine. <laughs> but the battle is the Lord's. I mean, sanctified folk got a way of talking that nobody else talk like sanctified folk. Sanctified folk talk about things that are not as if they already are. Thank, I was sanctified for, said the battle is the law. I might be going through, and that's exactly right. I might be going th in it, but I'm going through it. I might be in it right now, but I'm going through. Hey, good God, the devil might have me in him, but I'm going through. Hey, hey, look at him, I say, I'm going through. I'm going through. I'll pay the price, whatever others do. I'll take the way of the Lord, despise few. I started with Jesus. Look at somebody and say, but I'm going through. Well, I buy my car this year. I'm going through. And by the way, since the battle is the Lord, I want to ask you a question. Only you can answer. Has the Lord ever come through for you? No food. Has the Lord ever come through? For you with financial situations, but the Lord came through for me. When I was weak and worn and weary and sick and couldn't hardly make, but the Lord came through for me. When I didn't see my way, when, oh my God, y'all, 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 y'all bother me. Had the Lord, hey, good God, oh man. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God and in the mountain of his holy, beautiful for situation. He's a joy of the whole earth. Mount Zion. On the side of the north is the city of our great king. Oh, my God. I used to hear my pastor quote that all the time. That's where I got it from. I got it from Bishop D. Lawrence Williams. The Lord. What you talking about? God shall bless us. 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 You're weak, but God shall bless us. You're tired, but God shall bless us. You ain't got no money, but God shall bless us. You ain't got your mortgage money, but God shall bless us. You don't see a way through, but God shall bless us. Stand on your feet and say, God shall bless us. Turn around and say, God shall bless us. Say it again, God shall bless us. Look around and say, God shall bless us. Yeah. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth 
shall fear him. I see Bishop Weaver, that's a short man. God shall bless her. And we say, God shall bless her. When he said, we said, God shall bless her. Because we, he said in power and with faith. And we picked on that same faith and said, God shall bless us. Good God Almighty. When he said it was a third, we said, God shall bless I don't care what was going on. We said, God shall bless her. And we believed it. Look at somebody said, God shall bless us. Sit on that. Sit on back down. Sit on back down. But as you sit down and say, God shall bless us. Mama Martin, I know the Lord is blessing me right now. You may not be able to see what the Lord is doing for me, but the Lord is blessing me right now. Let's kill the giant. Say, let's kill the giant. Let's kill the giant. I mean the giant. Hey, good call on my head. The giant side giant. Hey, God, God, well, put a pink slip oh, oh, on your desk at work. When you walk in, you got a pink slip. You know what that means, you're fired. Good call on my head. Hey, good call. When a drunk driver comes down the street and runs into your car, yeah, oh, yeah. That, that's a giant. <laughs> Can I talk while I'm at it? Yay! Good God Almighty. I mean, when, 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 when you don't even have mortgage money, in just a few days you got to pay the mortgage and ain't got no money. But oh, that's a giant. His name is not going to lie. His name is like no money. Is that our name say? That means no money. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got a mortgage to pay downtown, but you ain't got no money. That's a giant. Got a child sick and ain't got no money. Hey, good call almighty. To even go to a doctor, that's a giant. When your own body is wrecked in pain, hey, good, that's a giant. Can I talk about it, man? Let's kill the giant. Huh? The loss of your home, that's a giant. The loss of your car, that's a giant. When your children have gone bad, that's a giant. Hey, when physical problems get a hold of your life and get a hold of your body and you can't hardly make it out of bed, you can't hardly put one foot out of bed, that's a giant. Got emotional problems. Emotional problems in your family. That's a giant. When your daughter comes home pregnant, that's a giant. Ain't got no husband. That's a giant. Want to marry somebody 40 years old and she is 18. That's a giant. That's a boy that go here and got pregnant. That's a giant. I don't care what you say. He shall a cosia. Friend of mine calling from Memphis. Few weeks, few months ago now, says Clark, said, I want to tell you something. Said, I'm going to be your granddad. I said, What? And I know you had one son. And I didn't, he never said anything about getting married. I couldn't say it, that's wonderful. I, was, I said, Sure enough. He said, Yes. I'm trying to, I want to ask, when did his son get married? He kept on talking. I said, Oh. Oh, he said, and the baby boy said, oh, and said, he's happy. Said, oh, I said, you're going to be a granddaddy? He said, yeah. Hmm. I said, wait a minute. Is he married? He said, no, no, he, 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 he married. He's thinking, but he thought, huh, he's thinking too late. Yeah, he got it backwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I said, I told him, I said, I told you to talk to that boy. He said, I did talk to him. I, I told him what not to do. I told him don't do it because he'll be like me because way back then, I did the same thing. I, I know my back. He said, I told him not to do it. I said, what? He said, I told him. But you know, he wouldn't listen. Something got a hold of him. But he told something else. I, I, he told what happened. I want to congratulate him, but I can't congratulate that. I can't congratulate that. I can't congratulate. And he was, he was halfway. He wanted to tell me, didn't want to tell me. He was in between. He was mixed up and everything. And I didn't want him to feel bad, but, but I, I, I couldn't put my blessing on that. You know what I mean? I'm a sanctified preacher. I couldn't put my blessing on it. But I said, oh, I said, what your grandma, what grandma said? He said, the grandma said, that's nice. I said, what does uncle say? He said, the uncle said that they happy, but they ain't saved. They ain't saved. I said, how you feel about it, grandpa? He said, well, ain't nothing I can do now. I said, that is the truth. I, I didn't want him to feel bad. But I didn't want to think I was putting the blessing right. on. You understand me? Yes, See, I got, don't care what, I got to take my stand. Amen. Can I, uh, I wish somebody said, take a stand, Bishop. Amen. But that's a giant. Can I talk while I'm at it? Just stop this thing. God. I'm just trying to say, the Lord is with me. Bernard got to talking a while ago. And I, 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 I let me say, I'm going to sit down. I'm talking too long. But, I, hey, good call on my The other night, the night I'll tell you about, I was sitting in a chance crying and sleeping. And I said, Lord, I said, you know, I just talked. What day was the where we had the meeting? I was out to talk to him and brought me a report in what we've done in the situation that we're in right now and the money that we need. And I, was, I didn't want to talk to any. I was so messed up. Couldn't sleep. Sat there in the chair. I said, Lord, Lord, you know the situation better than I. You know what we need. I said, God, you can do it. I said, Lord, I'm praying for my five million. I believe in you for my five million dollars. I don't know when it's coming, but Lord, I believe it's coming. And I said, that's why I went back. I said, Lord, I'm talking to the Lord like he doesn't know. And God knows everything. I said, Lord, you know about 47 years ago, back then the sickness when we didn't have a dime. Whew. And we wanted to build this, you told me to build this church. And you told me how to build it and what to build it for to accommodate. And we didn't have a dime. I said, Lord, you sent the money in. You gave me a people that don't care what I said. Even when I made a mistake and had the wrong thing, they, 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 they had a people that backed me up in everything. See, say, you got to understand this. I mean, my people backed me up in everything. Everything. I wish the older folks was here now. My mother, tell, you ought to jump up and shout, Mother Anna Ed, and Mother Juanita. You ought to jump and say, That's the truth. I mean, they back me up in everything. What I need, they back me up. Oh, good God, oh, man. I said, Lord, I said, Some folks don't believe that I'm going to get the five million dollars. I said, But that's a giant that I face every day. I, I face that giant every day because the devil tells me that you ain't going to get it. And that's a giant. I said, but the same devil told me back in the city that I never would build this church. But we in. The folks laughed at us. The folks said I was taking the money. The folks said it'll never be. The folks talked about Miss Harmon. She was building that day that got higher. And he ain't going to never do it. I tell you, I said, Lord, I just cry. I'm just crying to the Lord. And I said, Lord, I remember when they went down to Mr. Gwale down there at Mellon Bank. I thought I could borrow the money. And I went down there to Mellon Bank, talked to Al Gwale, who was the head of Mellon Bank. He said, Pastor Clark, 
said, listen, you said, I could let you have every dime of what you want to build that church. But said, first of all, a young man like you, you ain't going to be here. He then gone. But said, you ain't going to be here. A man like you, with your ability, he want to tell me what I had and who I was, the kind of man I was. In Aliquippa, you ain't going to stay in Aliquippa. So you'll get my money, and your church, the national church, will pick you up and send you somewhere else. And your church will be left on us the money. And because they ain't got you, they ain't going to be able to pay the money back. So I can't let you have it. I said, Mr. Warren, we're going to pay you back. And that was one of the reasons I, I had to do some things. Had to prove to the folk. I, I didn't know. I had to prove to the folk that I'm going to stay here. I went and bought me a house. built me a house. That's why they got 157 Baker Road, Manaka. Because Mr. Gwalder told me, I, I said, I, I got the truth, of, I'm going to be here. I got some, some reason to be here. I got a home here. He said the next thing. He said some folk came down here. 700, well, some folk. And one folk, one man from this church. I remember when I took him in from the, well, you know, I took him in. He came down and said, you said you're going to take the city. And said, so all the churches in the city, they said, all the church in the city going to close down and join your church. Now, you know that was a lie. But how can you prove a lie? But they had come down there, Mother Martin, and told Mr. Gwalley that. And Mr. Gwalley didn't let us have the money. That was a giant. I had to fight that giant. That was the man that promised Reverend Clark, Reverend Clark, I'll let you have the money. And while I was in church, we were in church shouting and dancing, telling the folk I got the money, say he going to loan us. God didn't want to loan anyhow. But anyway, we're going to get the money. And shouting and dancing. And he came out with his secretary, Miss B, out here. I didn't know it. And saw this hole. He said, uh-uh. I can't put my money in that hole. He went right straight back. And Secretary wrote me the letter on Sunday night, and I got the letter Monday. And said, I can't let you have the money because I can't put my money in the hole. Lord, I had a fit. That was a giant. I said, I got to go back and tell my folk that we ain't got the money. After all that shouting and dad and praising God to be dead, I got to tell them we ain't got the money. And I went back, me and Brother Sly went back and talked to Mr. Uh, good cover, oh, what his name? Oh, my Lord. Lama, Lama, Arch Lama, head of the BP, the BYPU. Not the BYPU, who was the BB? Busy Beaver. He said, Reverend Clark, said, listen, a man like in 84 Pennsylvania said, Mr. Clark, Reverend Clark, said, I can't put my money in that hole. Said, but if you'll go out, Anywhere, anywhere, and find you a good piece of land. So I'll build that church for you. Hey, good God Almighty. I'll build the whole thing, give you a turnkey job. And I thought about that. That was a giant. But I said, and, I, and anybody, I said, yeah, I said, Mr. Lawler, I said, thank you. But I said, God told me to build the church on that piece of property. And I know it's a big hole there. But I can't help it. God told me to build it right there. And I can't take, I can't do it. And I said, well, you give us your money. No, Brother Sly said. Say, what you said, Mr. Sly? <laughs> Brother John Sly said, Mr. Norma. Said, first of all, said, whatever my pastor said, we with our pastor. And our pastor says that God told him to build the church on that property said with or without your money whether you give us your money or not we gonna build our church on that the pa our pastor that's my chairman trustee our, we had a dime 
our pastor said, God told him, and we're going to build our church. And we believe it, and we're going to build the church on that property. And the song said, all right then, go ahead. I got in the car and just cried, 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 cried. The other man, another giant, Mr. Peters down there in Beaver Falls at that church. Ah, oh, the law. Save it alone down there. He told me, he said, no, Reverend Clark. I can't let you have the it out of whipper. I can't put my money. I'm sorry. Uh, for 11, I can't put my money there. That place, I got in the car, brush line with me again. I got in the car, broke down, cried. I got, I got fell on my knees on the car. And Brush Sly looked at me. He was feeling sorry for me. He said, Pastor, said, didn't you say the Lord told you to build that? That's all he had to say. He didn't say you are not crying. He said, didn't you say the Lord? And when he said that, the Lord spoke again. He said, I said, Brother Sly, he did say it. He did tell me. And then I my God Almighty. <laughs> Let me stop here. I'm getting too long. 68. Elder Biden was here. He said, Clark, say you just worried yourself to death, man. You're going to kill yourself. Say, man, you, what you need to do is get out of here. You need to make it. And he said, I'll take you. To, if you'll go, I wouldn't go anywhere. I'll take you to California. He just kept on begging until I said, all right, I'll go. But I pray and ask the Lord, Lord, let me die. Let me die. Let me die. I ain't got the money. Told the folk going to build this church. I ain't got the money. I got to that somebody. I said, I said, we all know we'd have stayed in the same room. I said, buddy, you get your room next door. I, I want to stay by myself. I'll stay in my room, and you stay in your room. But he didn't know what I'd asked the Lord. I got in the room and sat down at the for, for unpack my bag. I sat down at the desk there. Nothing on but the little light on my desk. Curtains all pulled down. I sat down and wrote a letter to my son, Melvin. I said, Melvin Jr., I said, I want you, so and so and so told him. I said, I want you to take your mama now. You look after your mama and look after the family, your brother and sister. You look, because I'm so sure I'm going to die. I said, you, you do that. I didn't think I was coming back home. When I signed the letter, finished the letter and signed it, the whole of the crime, the Holy Ghost took my hands up like that. Pick, I mean the Holy Ghost picked me up from the seat. Picked me up and carried me to the side of my bed and I fell on my knees on the side of my bed close to the window. And the Holy Ghost started talking. I mean the Holy Ghost Rudy started talking. He said, didn't I tell you to, didn't I tell you to come to Africa? I said, yes, Lord, you told me come yeah I said, di said didn't I tell you to build that church and didn't I tell you to build the church that was seen that? and didn't I tell you that I'm going to send them in from the everywhere I said yes Lord you told me I said but Lord I ain't got no money and it's not he, but God kept, kept yes Lord he said, but have I been sending money? I said, yes, Lord. I kept on saying, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He said, hey, good God Almighty. He said, yes. My mother, I kept on saying, yes, Lord, till the tears uh -huh. dried up. Yeah. Mother Granny, the tears dried up. Yeah. And when they dried up, he said, you go back to Alaquippa. Right. And said, I mean, God taught. I mean, ain't no fault. God telling me orally. Don't tell me God didn't speak. Don't speak to me. And he does now. He does. He does. I'm talking slaying the giant. He said, you go back to Alan Cripper. And he said, you going to meet a man, a rich man. And he's going to help you build your church. Saints, I never heard of a rich man. 
I didn't know anybody rich. I didn't know anybody in my church rich. But God said, out of Clipper, say, you're going to be... You're going you're gonna to meet a rich man, and he's going to help you build a church. I said, I didn't say, but I knew, I don't know no rich man. And I didn't say it then. I said, yes, Lord, because the God was speaking. I got right up. My clothes still on. I said, body, and got knocked got body. He said, go, go and eat. I said, go, body. We got to go back home. He said, What? <laughs> He said, Cloud, we just got here. I said, Body, the Lord told me to go back home. And Body, he told me that I'm going to meet a millionaire. He said, There's going to be a millionaire to help me build my church. Well, Body had confidence in me. Now, I had to get in my own spirit after God said it. But I knew God said it. He said, Clark, don't go back home today. I said, man, we just got here. I, I know where I stayed. I know what room I stayed in, all that. He said, Clark, we just got here. You can't go back home today. You can't go back home now. I said, Clark, and he looked at me. He said, well, Clark, let's just stay one more day, and then let's go. I said, all right, buddy. I got to go. Body knew that God had spoken to me. And they got on the plane and came back home. And they got, I didn't tell nobody. Nobody but body. Uh, got back, I ain't know what to do. I ain't know where to go or what's what. I ain't know no rich man. Body said he would stay a few more days. And Bonnie went out to try to help me different places to get some money to help me build a church. Why in the world would Bonnie go down, go there to, to Penn Beaver Hotel? I had no business there. He, he went in Penn Beaver Hotel. Look at God. In Penn Beaver Hotel. And who would it be? Michael Baker was having lunch, just had lunch, and was going back to his office. Bob didn't know no Michael Baker. Bob got on the elevator. And Michael Baker didn't want to know who he was. He knew he was a stranger in town. And Bob told him who he was and what you're doing here. And I'm here for uh, Pastor Melvin Clark over in Aliquippum. And Bob started talking to the man about me. Michael Baker didn't know me. I didn't know no Michael Baker, but he, he started talking to Michael Baker about me. And Michael Baker said, I'd like to meet this man. Body said, I can get him now. <laughs> Body got on the phone and called me at home, 102 Sutton Street. Said, Clark, said, come on out here, man. Say, I'm a man going to want to help you. I, I met a rich man. He want to help you build your church. Now, he didn't know that. But I had a rich man. And when he said that, hold up, that's right. I jumped in my clothes, got myself in line, jumped in my car, and drove on the hardy. I got to Pin Beaver Hotel in no time flat. Yeah, <laughs> Michael Baker up, carried me in his office, sat me down, mm. and called his son in, Mike the Third, and said, Mike, this is Pastor Clark. He said, he's trying to build a church over in Outer Clipper. And he's having a time trying to build that church, a great big church. And he's going to tell me, they listen to me, listen to me tell the story. Listen to me tell the vision. And honey, you know I can tell the vision. And they sat there and looked at me. And write the vision. Write the vision. Make it plain. They sat there, Curtis, and looked at me. And Michael Baker turned around to his son said, Mike, say, what can we do for Pastor Clark? Say, Mike said, Daddy, we got to do something for this man. <laughs> Six, later on, <laughs> Mike Baker said, I would have died had he not helped me. Mike third said, Daddy, 
We got to do something for this man. Said, but this is such a big thing. This is a metropolitan job in Alacrippa. Building a church like that in Alacrippa. Said, whoever in Alacrippa. He said, Daddy. Said, what we need to do? You need, you need to get them four banks. Mellon. What the other bank? PMB, Western Pennsylvania, and the other one. Four banks said they need to come together and get so much money and get that money and build that man a church. <laughs> Michael Baker. I, I'm, I'm talking slay the line. Everybody said slay the line. <laughs> that was a great big line. Michael Baker. Listen. Said, yeah. But say, get the, no, get the checkbook. And Michael Baker wrote me a check for $5,000. Ah, when I heard or saw five, five, I cried the more. I fell out, and I think I jumped him and hugged him. I, I don't know what I got him or hugged him, man, or kissed him or what. I, I, got, I got to find him from body. It's been so long. I got to find him. But I think I jumped him and kissed him. But I fell out on the floor and just hollered. And the man looked at me and said, <laughs> <laughs> and body looked at me, and I got the floor wall in the floor, in my brand in my suit, just wallowing and crying, and thanking God, thank you, Jesus. And my mom, I do like you do. I wallowed in the floor, thank you, Jesus. Ain't nobody ever give me five thousand dollars to build my what you talking about? And he said, "What I'll do? I'm gonna hire the mayor, Mayor Nish." <laughs> said Mr. Nish. You go and talk to them banks and talk to the Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Mr. Lane, and tell them folks to get together and get what I want and get them folks to get the money to build that church there in Alquiver. And Mr. Nish supposed been working for me, but see, well, I, I won't go there. Some folk, ever, some folk didn't like me. Mr. Nish going now. He didn't like me. He hey, good call him that. And Michael Baker hired him to work for me. <laughs> Ain't that something? And Michael Baker would find won't know why or what happened to the people, what they do. He said, Mr. Baker, you don't want to do that. Said Rem Clark drive walks drives around here in a cat big Cadillac and he drives around here with $200 suits on, and shark skin suits on, and Michael Bay said, ah! You fired. He fired Mr. Nish, the mayor of this city. He fired him. Said, I'll do it myself. He called Mr. Cancelier at Western Pennsylvania Bank himself. Got him on the phone. And said, Mr. Cancelier, I got a man in here named Bishop Clark, Melvin Clark, Reverend Clark. Said he's building a church there in Aliquippa. They ain't got the money. But this man, he said, hey, this man, he's a black Billy Graham. I never heard before. He said, he called me a black Billy Graham. Said, you ought to hear him. He's a black Billy Graham. And the he got the folk, and they're coming. And he needs the money for this church. And I want you to give him so much money. Mr. Counselor never seen me. He said, surely I'll do it. Sit him down to my bank and talk to John Black. I said, I'll be there today. I'll be there. Go there tomorrow. And John Black, Black will be waiting for you. Honey, you've been with me. Elder Walton and I went down to the bank and told Mr. Black, Mr. what's his name? John Black. John Black, who I was and what was what. Mr. Black said, yes. Bet. Bet. John Bet wrote that check and said, yes, Bishop Clark. I am a Clark, Pastor Clark. Got the blueprints? Said, no, I got no blueprints. I wonder what a blueprints. <laughs> All the stuff we have is on a napkin. Because I change it every day. 
trying to get Tom Gabrielli to build up what God had shown me in the vision. Whew. He said, you mean you ain't got no, no black friend? But the boss had said, let the man have the money with no blueprints. The man let me have so much money then. Can I thousands of dollars? Is that unheard of? No financial statement? On the word? Thousands of dollars. Crumpler Thomas. Thousands of dollars. Somebody had confidence in Melvin Clark. God. Hey, good God. God speaking. And I had the authority to kill the lion. Giant. Everybody says, Slay the giant. One more time, says, Slay the giant. One more time, says, Slay the giant. Came back and told my people. We were raising so much money on the third Sunday and put in the, the banks didn't believe it. They didn't believe that we were raising in our crippa, a church, raising that much money. I think they thought, look, anyway, Mr. Early and Mr. Froats came to the church, the little church across the street on the third Sunday, sat back there in the church and watched us. Watch me ask for a hundred dollars to the people and saw the folk jumping. No, sir. But I'm telling you how the folk did over there. Before we got over here, they were knocking folk all the way down, over, trying to get in the line, the hundred dollar line. We, we called it Faith Sunday. Could call it, and they were to get in line, and the line was from the front all the way to the back and around. Come with the hundred. Mr. Froakes and Mr. Erdogan looked at each other. They were looking and looking and looking. And the mouth. They were looking. And then they saw us bring the money downtown to the Western Pennsylvania. Right. The, the, oh my God, oh my. The Alacribble News came in. Miss, Miss, Miss Rice from, from Pittsburgh Courier came in and wrote $25,000 in 15 minutes. I'm glad they don't come now. We got the records. But Thomas, in 15 minutes, over $25,000, the paper, is, I think I got the paper some way, but I, I got the, the, the right now. You got it? Pastor, $25,000 in 15, all over Pittsburgh, all over Alabama, everybody knew what we were doing here at the round, the church. The news got out. And the bankers say, I know it's true. I was there killing giants. My folk helped me kill giants. No, I need the money, killing giants. No, I need a fight, killing giants. Need 500, killing giants. Need a thousand, not killing giants. From nothing. Good God Almighty. Can I talk while I'm at it? I'm talking about we slayed giants, eh? We just giants. All they had was my word. And the folk believe the word of God in Melvin Clark. They believe the word. Some folk would give their last and give their all and all else. But they, hey, to get them, we in here today. Folks said we never would do it. And the Holy Ghost gave Brother Curtis the song that said it could be done. And said no, y'all remember that? And said nobody could do it. The Holy Ghost gave him sitting down in the audience here. Oh, my preacher said that said it couldn't be done. And he wrote the song. And D.S. the Rings singing in the choir over there at the Methodist Church one Sunday morning. Holy Ghost said leave this church and go over to the sanctified church. She came with her choir robe on, put her books down over there, 
walked out the choir with her robe on, came through the back lane here, and came to the church and went straight to the altar. And got sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, I. I'm going to 